Even though JRPGs aren't my perfect cup of tea, I typically prefer something a bit sweeter, I cannot help but bask in the glory of a brand new Switch game from Nintendo hitting this week. It looked like it would never happen for a while. It's been so many months, so many moons, and so many hours of AC, and we finally have a new Nintendo-made Switch game dropping in the form of Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. And today I'm taking you through all the reviews. We're going to find out if it's worth it, if it's worth your money, if it's been worth the wait, if we should play it after being so invested in Animal Crossing New Horizons, or if it's a skip. Now after AC, it was like, what's coming out next? We have no idea. Now the games are gonna start rolling. So smash that like button if you're excited that new Switch titles are hitting. We've got this, and then Clubhouse games, and then Paper Mario and the Origami King, and then we're all predicting more Mario later in the year, and probably more after that. It's like Nintendo finally woke up and remembered, hey, we can walk to a store, drop off a bundle of cartridges, and make people happy. And third parties are doing the same. There's Bioshock and Borderlands. There's Catherine Full Body. A lot of good stuff coming this summer. It's about to heat up. And this is our first opportunity to get something really new since a C. So let me know in the comments down below what you think. If you're going to pick it up, if you think I should give it a go, if you're a big fan of the franchise, is it something I should dip my toes into. Well, let's see what the reviews say. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition launches this Friday, and it's got an 89 on Metacritic. That's a pretty high score. Now, the franchise has always performed well. It initially released in 2012 on the Wii as Xenoblade Chronicles. 92 is the score it received. Then they followed up with Xenoblade Chronicles X, the Wii U version, in 2015, which got an 84. And as I'm sure you know, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 hit the Switch in 2017, the launch year, with an 83. Now, they did redo Xenoblade Chronicles once before, a 3D version, one of the only new Nintendo 3DS exclusive titles, in 2015, which got an 86. So this franchise, like I said, it's always been a really critically well-received game. 89 is awesome. There's a lot of 9s, some 10s, and very few naysayers for this new definitive edition, and it sounds like it might be the best game in the franchise yet. Let's dive straight in. VG247 says Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition lives up to its name, providing the absolute best version of this modern Japanese RPG classic to date. Some HD remasters and remakes are easier than others. One of the largest determining factors of such releases is pretty simple. How good was the original game? For Xenoblade, Nintendo and Monolith Soft's huge Wii RPG, the answer is favorable indeed. While thinking of the Wii probably first conjures up images of sports and fitness games, minigame collections, and Wii remotes flung to shatter the screen of a brand new TV, Xenoblade is arguably one of the console's most important and standout games. And this really made me think, guys, because yes, like at one point this was a cult classic, but now? Everything Nintendo introduced in that era, it's one of the most relevant today. We where other successes have faded, Xenoblade has a Smash character, two sequels including an excellent Switch entry, a 3DS port, and a feverish fan demand for another entry. The original game is that good, and it's true. As much as something like Splatoon stands out as one of Nintendo's boldest, best introductions in recent memory, Xenoblade is as well. This is a juggernaut for Nintendo. Now, maybe it doesn't sell as well as some of the others, but in terms of its importance to fans, this game has a devout audience, and that's super important to take into consideration, especially since it sounds like this is, like, the best thing they've done. VG247 continues saying, Unlike many of its genre peers, Xenoblade really shines in how it's played. The world is open-ended, with each area feeling more of an impressive sprawl than the last. Even when areas are smaller, often impressive skyboxes and landscapes beyond make them feel more than they are. The first area of the game is a perfect example of the open-ended nature of Xenoblade Chronicles. In those first few hours, players can happily just follow the icons on the map to quickly progress the main story, but it's also easy to wander off into the world, tackling side quests, picking up items, and simply exploring. Now, I will say that later on in today's video, you're going to see how some of those side quests and some of that gameplay is not beloved by all, but the scope and scale of this world is undeniable. VG continues saying the design of this world is key to the general flow of Xenoblade. There's a full day-night cycle as well as a weather system, and the behavior and placement of enemies and NPCs is directly impacted by these systems. Xenoblade shows you where things can go early on, offering glimpses of hugely powerful enemies you're better off avoiding for now, very early in the game. And they compare it to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which, take note, that's huge. 
Now, VG247 gave it a 10 out of 10, but Destructor isn't far behind, giving it a 9.5, although they do call out a few things that are frustrating, and I want to get to those now. It's not a perfect game. They say it does have its drawbacks, though. Combat can feel very passive outside of boss fights, going through the same motions for optimal combos to save time and clear trash for experience. While Xenoblade is littered with hundreds of quests, many of them are collect two bones, or kill X enemies garden variety opening MMO stuff, which can get tiring. The AI can also still act stupidly, and you can't fine-tune their strategies. Yes, the combat system still isn't perfect, but here's the big reason why people love Xenoblade Chronicles to this day. The highly emotional world and characters. It has plenty of heart, a constant upbeat attitude, a beautiful soundtrack, and a likable cast. Although the sequels have made mechanical strides, Shulk and his crew are timeless pillars in the pantheon of JRPG parties. And I think that's the sense I'm getting that these characters are one of the main reasons this game is so special, even compared to the others in the franchise. Let's move on to the fine folks over at Eurogamer who did not score the game but seemed to like it. They say what's special about this Definitive Edition is how it's made that much easier to discover for newcomers and veterans alike. The UI has been stripped back, quest markers and locations made more explicit, while the path to your next objective is neatly marked on your mini-map. Exploration of a world as rich as this is its own reward, but it's certainly been helped along by the more generous XP bonuses that are granted upon coming across a new location or completing one of the countless side quests. That's repeated off. There are so many side quests, and I think it's both exciting and exhilarating and also daunting. Which brings me to perhaps the best addition made in this definitive edition, though it might not be for you. A casual mode's been introduced that reduces even the toughest of boss fights to a mere inconvenience, while normal encounters are rushed through in the blink of an eye. For new players who wouldn't mind condensing Xenoblade's sizable length, it's an agreeable way to cut the runtime without impacting the scope and scale, and for returning players like myself, it what makes could be a slog in a pleasant stroll. Now, it doesn't sound like the game has a super slow start, like a lot of people complain about Xenoblade Chronicles 2, but it does have its huge hour count. And if you're maybe new to the Switch for Animal Crossing and you want to dip your toes into this, but don't really have the time or the desire to challenge yourself, this casual mode seems like a great addition to the game and franchise. GameSpot also loved the game. They gave it a 9.0, saying, Thankfully, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition does away with the affinity chart in the excellent new 20-hour-long epilogue, Future Connected. Because remember, this Definitive Edition doesn't just boost the graphics and make the game more streamlined. It does add an epilogue. And I've seen people say the epilogue is 10 to 20 hours long, so anywhere in there, but still a sizable amount of content. GameSpot says, Future Connected takes place after the events of the main game, but can be accessed at any time from the main menu, which is a great quality of life inclusion. I love that you could just step in, play the new content first if you're already really familiar with this title. Even though Shulk still plays a big role in the epilogue, the story is centered around Melia, a party member from the original game, as she tries to figure out what happened to her hometown, Alchemoth. It's a bold move to shine the spotlight on Melia rather than Shulk, but it's one that ultimately pays off. Shulk's story has already been told, and given how Xenoblade Chronicles ends, there are a lot of loose ends to tie up with Melia's story and character. Without getting into spoilers and specifics, Future Connected does an excellent job at exploring the repercussions and ramifications of Xenoblade Chronicles' final moments. And they say it's one of the best pieces of the game because due to its shorter length, there's less filler, and it kind of just flies through, maybe being one of their most favorite parts of the entire story. And it showcases some of Monolith Soft's best world creature and art design. Rather than a bunch of smaller maps divided by loading screens, Feature Connected takes place on the Bioness's shoulder, a massive lush area with stunning vistas and incredible architecture at every turn. That sounds really freaking neato. Nintendo Life loved the game as well, giving it a 9.0, and they focused a bit on the graphical differences for this definitive edition. They said we'd be remiss to discuss Xenoblade Chronicles without taking some time to focus on the absolutely incredible presentation on offer here. Though the original was packed with breathtaking visuals, the up-close shots at models and textures revealed that the graphics were humble, to put it nicely. All of that is gone for this DE release. Textures have been updated, new shaders have been applied, lighting looks better, and character models are more expressive than ever before, splitting the difference between the gritty realistic look of the original and the much more anime style of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Most importantly, Xenoblade Chronicles looks great whether you're playing docked or handheld, running at 30 FPS in both modes. Though the dynamic resolution means it doesn't hit max res on either front, it nonetheless looks to be far ahead of the blurry messiness that plagued Xenoblade Chronicles 2. We'd say this is the best that any Xenoblade game has ever looked, and it certainly deserves to be in the running for one of the most visually impressive releases on the Switch to date, which is great for a game from almost a decade ago, right? I think that's really impressive. IGN was a little more critical, but still gave the game an 8.0. 
they did have some bones to pick, including saying that Future Connected wasn't that fun for them. They go on to say, while those improvements are great, this remaster doesn't go far enough elsewhere, opting to maintain a lot of outdated mechanics. The affinity coin and skill tree system, for example, remain an obtuse and bizarre way to buff characters based on social links, both soaking up far more attention than they seem worth. Gem crafting is still a time-consuming and convoluted way to improve your gear, usually a huge chore I felt obligated to do rather than an exciting path to getting stronger. And it's still a really weird choice to make all the most powerful versions of every art only obtainable via a random in-world drop, meaning you've just got to grind certain areas of the world and farm certain enemy types for hours if you hope to reach the apex of your character's abilities. I'm all for staying true to the original when it makes sense to do so, but this Wii-era RPG design doesn't do a whole lot to make you invest it in your team and could benefit from more of a refresh, especially when so many excellent RPGs have come out in the eight years since. And that's always a tough decision for companies that remake and remaster games. How much freedom do you take? Are you able to rework the systems or should you stay truly true to the original? Do you just boost the graphics and streamline the quality of life stuff? Or do you, you know, go in and actually adjust the combat system, adjust the leveling up system to make it better? It sounds like Xenoblade stuck to their guns and some people love that and some people don't as much. Now, comicbook.com is the only review that seems negative on the game. They gave it a 6 out of 10, the lowest score on Metacritic right now. And they didn't feel like... It does enough. They, similar to IGN's complaint, feel like it is stuck in the past. They say, unfortunately for Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, the Nintendo Switch isn't exactly hurting for JRPGs, though few can match its breadth and width. If you've been curious about the title and managed to miss out on both the Wii and 3DS versions, picking up the Switch 1 is practically a no-brainer, even if it does feel like a bit of a throwback. If you've played it before and loved it, maybe Future Connected is plenty enough reason to return. But if you are just generally interested in games more broadly, there are probably better uses of your time. If they had seriously reworked the combat in some way, it probably wouldn't really be Xenoblade Chronicles any longer, but I imagine I also would have had a much better time with it. Not a fan of the combat, not a fan that they did stay so true to the original, which you can't really fault them for, but I do understand. It does feel like this game is going to be mostly for genre enthusiasts, Xenoblade enthusiasts, and there is something, you know, if you haven't really explored much in the JRPG pantheon on Switch, you know, they've got the casual mode, it's a ton of content. It is put out and published by Nintendo. It's got really pretty visuals, but there are so many options on the system. If you want something a little bit more forward thinking, this isn't going to be it. Last but not least, let's talk about Kotaku, who said, A fresh coat of paint isn't going to solve all of the game's problems, and Xenoblade Chronicles still has its fair share. Just because the characters are prettier doesn't make their personalities and cause and catchphrases any less irritating, and the game is still padded with a seemingly endless assortment of inane side quests. So look, I have to include both sides of the coin here. The game isn't for everyone. Kotaku didn't score it, but they were a little more negative, like comicbook.com. And if it's not your cup of tea, that's A-OK. -okay. You've got Clubhouse Games, you've got Paper Mario and the Origami King, you've got the Bioshock Collection, Borderlands Collection, You've got a lot of alternate options if this isn't for you, which is great. If this was the only release for the next couple of months, it would be really tough. It would be tricky. You'd say, hey, can I stomach JRPG common practices because I want to play something new? But now you've got choice, and I'm curious what choice you're going to make. After hearing about how well this reviewed, especially for those that love JRPGs, are you interested? Do you think I should give it a chance? Let me know in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and are excited for more Switch releases. I mean, we're still all going to play Animal Crossing. Don't worry. But it's cool to see some new carts coming out. I like that. It's important for the year. It's important for the system. And it's important for all of us Switch owners. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Have a fantastic freaking day. I hope you're staying safe and staying healthy, being respectful of others, and doing all that good stuff. Thank you for being awesome people. Thanks for being awesome supporters of the channel. I love you all a lot. Until next time, thanks again. Switch Force. Out.